Good morning, everyone. The last week saw a number of days which were marked as special days. Yesterday, for example, was Cancer Survivors Day. Saturday was the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings in northern France during World War II. And Friday was World Environment Day. Any of them could have provided a good focus for this morning's assembly. But the news in recent days has been dominated by the outpouring of rage and anger in America after George Floyd died whilst being arrested by the police. His arrest, which involved an officer kneeling on his neck for nearly nine minutes such that he couldn't breathe, was videoed and quickly went viral. George Floyd was black, and it was the latest in a number of high profile deaths of black people at the hands of the police, and has shone once again the spotlight on the inequality in American society experienced by the black population. But it's also held up a mirror to the injustice of their inequality and that of other ethnic groups in all parts of the world, including here in the UK, and we have to conclude in Berkshire too. So in addition to protests in, I think it was 76 American cities, there have been protests all over the world under the rallying cry, Black Lives Matter. Now, Mr. Jeffers, our chaplain, addressed what's been happening on Wednesday morning reflecting on the fact that according to the Bible, all people of every race and tribe and nation are created in the image of God, and thus all people of every race and tribe and nation are equally precious in God's sight and have equal dignity and value. And the message of the Christian gospel is that in his death, Jesus Christ has broken down the barriers which exist between people of every race and tribe and nation and has made it possible for the wounds and the hurts of division to be healed. So for those of us living in a country whose laws and culture are built on a foundation of Christianity, racism should have no place. And this must be true of Pangborn too. It was deeply ironic and to many highly offensive that President Trump chose to hold up the Bible for a photo opportunity after his route from the White House had been cleared of law abiding protesters using tear gas and rubber bullets. It would appear he's not read it very closely. If you hasn't, haven't listened to what the chaplain said, I'd encourage you to do so. And I've put the link in the notes below this video. In her assembly to Key Stage 4 on Friday, Mrs Greenwood also addressed the theme of racism and gave some practical advice on how you can respond both now during this time of lockdown and also in the future. And she issued a specific invitation to let us know what we as a school could do to tackle racism where we need to. Again, I've put the link in the notes to this video and I'd recommend what she said to all of you, not just those to whom she was speaking. Black lives matter. Now, a number of people have tried to respond to this slogan by pointing out that all lives matter, which is, of course, true. But there is a danger, especially when it's said by a white person, that this whitewashes the issue of racism so that its injustice is not seen clearly enough. Because the truth is that just as it is in America, in this country to be white is to be privileged. And it's even more true of those of us who've been given the gift of uh, an expensive independent education. The reality is that life for black people in the UK is harder than for white people at all levels of society. So for example, Asian and black households are more likely to be poor and to be in persistent poverty. Attainment for black Caribbean pupils in education is very low. About one in 10 adults from a black Pakistani, Bangladeshi or mixed background is unemployed compared with one in 25 white British adults. Black men are almost three and a half times more likely to be arrested than white men. And black adults are more likely than adults in other ethnic groups to have been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. So when someone says, all lives matter and means black lives matter, but white lives matter too. The fact is that these statements are not equal because for most white men and women, their lives are already better than for most black men and women. Power, influence, wealth, opportunity, education, and so on are not distributed equally in our society. And this is an injustice. Martin Luther King, one of the most important civil rights activists of the 1950s and 60s, possibly of all time in America, said, injustice anywhere 
is a threat to justice everywhere. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Black lives matter. Black people deserve to be treated with the same respect as white people and indeed other ethnic groups. And what has happened in America and around the world following George Floyd's death presents us with an opportunity to face up to the inequality and injustice, which is an everyday part of our society, but which due to ignorance or because we suppress it, we've not acknowledged properly. As someone recently said, it is not enough to be not racist. What is needed is to be anti-racist. I want this school to be a place where, as our code of conduct says, the individual truly matters. A place where skin colour or ethnic background, or indeed any other difference like age or gender or sexual orientation, disability or religion, is not a target for prejudice or discrimination. A community which promotes tolerance and acceptance of others. Just as I think it's important for our public institutions to look in the mirror at this time, the police, the armed forces, the judiciary, political parties, the church. So I think we at Pangborn need to look carefully into the mirror. Black lives matter. And I want to take this opportunity to apologize to any of our present and past pupils, parents and staff who feel that as a school, we have been insufficiently anti-racist. I believe that if we have, it's been unintentional, but I accept that we need to do more. And I pledge that Pangborn will take all forms of racism seriously, and we will not just not tolerate it, but we will work actively to eradicate it. I'd like to conclude this section with a short prayer to enable us to reflect on this situation, and I invite you to join me in saying it. Almighty God, we are sorry for the prejudice and injustice towards black people in our society, and also for the times when, consciously or unconsciously, we have shown the same in our own attitudes and actions. We pray that you would help us to recognize the dignity and worth of all people as those created in your image, whatever their skin color or ethnic group, and to treat them accordingly. Thank you for this opportunity to look in the mirror and we pray that you would show us the ways in which we need to change. At this time of tension and anger in America, we pray for the leaders in that country, as well as our own, to respond with compassion and wisdom, and that from George Floyd's death, good would come. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, whose death has the power to unite people of every race, tribe, and nation. Amen.